the extension to Trinidad's state of emergency has passed. Well, that was kind of expected, of course, because the ruling government has the votes to do it. And they did it. <laughs> so the state of emergency has passed. It's now part of the law. It's, well, it was always part of the law. It's now extended for another three months into November, I believe it will be. Something I'm wondering, and I, I saw somebody ask this question, and I think it's relevant because at the end of this three months, part of the reason when, when the state of emergency was debated in parliament, the prime minister gave the be all end all reason, the main reason why we need this state of emergency and we'll get into that eventually. But part of the reason for it is you're trying to deter the feel of exhale that would come as the state of emergency is lifted in the country. And I'm, I'm, I'm understanding of that because Trinidad does have a strong party vibe to it. So I believe I, I agree if the state of emergency is lifted now, some people may try to have a, an, an end of state of emergency party. And I heard some people say that they believe the actual reason has to do with the police ability to enter your private property. And that is more the government's intention. Now, I could believe that too, because that actually makes more sense than what is being said. But as I said, we'd get into that. So, okay, that could make sense. You want to deter that waiting to exhale vibe that may happen at the end of the state of emergency. But what is going to happen at the end of the state of emergency at the end of November? The end of November is the beginning of December. For those who may not know, which is no one, the beginning of December is Christmas season. Can you imagine the state of emergency being lifted with the same reasoning that we are saying now we want to deter that waiting to exhale vibe? At the start of Christmas season, and bear in mind, they would not be able to extend it as easily then. So what would happen? Would we have that waiting to exhale then? And are we sure within the next three months that Trinidad is going to be in such a position that we can freely exhale during Christmas? The Some of the videos I made that make clear I am not wholeheartedly in with the furtherance of this state of emergency. I. When some people see those videos and question it, it seems like some people think, if I'm not for the state of emergency, it's because I want all of Trinidad to get this virus and die. Nobody wants, well, I hope nobody wants that. Even people who are against your view, their view isn't to let the whole country die. I, if, you're, if you're doing this argument like, if you don't agree with me, you want everyone to die, you are doing a flawed argument style and you wouldn't get much traction in sensible conversation with that. What it is actually is we're trying to decide here, we're trying to draw a line, to know where the line is in between the freedoms that we have in a free society and the protection we would allow our government to do for our own safety. And there must be a line somewhere, if you are, even if you are a supporter of this government, because a lot of the times when you see some people say some things, because some, personally, this is for me, when I see you're trying to defend something and it's obviously lacking logic in your defense, I assume logic is not the reason you're defending this, so very likely you're a supporter of the government, which is fine, you can support who you wish. Personally, I prefer to not call myself a supporter of any political group. Because when you call yourself a supporter, generally what that insinuates is when they do their foolishness, which they always do, you would be in support of that. And the reason I think there must be a line, where is the line, whether you are you're a supporter or not. If you're a supporter, if you're not, draw this line. See, at this point, if this government does this much, if they reach this far, I will not allow it. I will not stand for it. I will disagree with it. And have in your mind where that line is. Because the reality is, it sounds scary. It sounds like just some people online trying to fear manga and make people scared. But the reality is, when you look at history, if you read through history and you see what happens when governments get more power or too much power, it is never good. It never ends well. Never. 
find one time where the government getting maximum power works for the benefit of all these citizens. It doesn't really go that way because it's impossible for one group to centrally plan what is best for a, a multitude of people. They just wouldn't know. And if you're ever in doubt about what a government may be capable, capable of doing for the excuse of pandemic or with the reason of pandemic, look over in Australia. I think Australia is going crazy because their numbers are not that high. Our numbers in COVID are comparable to Australia's numbers and Australia is massive. Yet they are basically under martial law. You're locked inside your home under threat of army and police intervention. Many people are going back to references that Australia was once a penal colony. They were once, they were once populated by people that were once in prison. And it could nearly seem like it's going back to that. Personally, I find they've lost the plot. They're, over in Australia, they killed dogs. They killed rescue dogs to have, avoid people going there to rescue the dogs. What is this? You kill the dogs to protect us from COVID. They're spraying 16-year-old children in the streets with pepper spray and mace to protect them from COVID. That does not add up. That is not protecting us from COVID. That is a power trip. And you need to decide personally, I find, you need to decide where that line is. Where the line is that you would say, we're seeing signs that these people are leaving just what is needed to keep us safe and they're going more into what is needed to make them feel powerful. Let's just browse that article before we reach back to Trinidad. Fura erupts after Australian officials kill rescue dogs over COVID-19 fears. Australia district officials have set off a storm of controversy after ordering the killing of several impounded rescue dogs because of COVID-19 transmission fears, triggering a government, in, a government investigation. The Rural Berkshire Council in New South Wales ordered the dogs shot, not even euthanized, shot. Last week, to prevent volunteers at an animal shelter from traveling to the pound to collect them as part of a process to find homes for the animals. According to the Office of Local Government, which oversees the local councils, the Sydney Morning Herald reported Sunday. The number of dogs, I believe, was over 10. One of the dogs was a mother dog who just had some puppies and eventually all the puppies the mother dog had died too. What manner of insanity is that? That you would kill, you would shoot homeless dogs that you have in the pound just to prevent people from coming to rescue them for a virus that has a zero point something chance. That does not make sense. Is it just me finding that the reaction needs to measure up, needs to balance out with the risk? The reaction and the risk needs to balance out. Okay, let's return to Trinidad. During the debate on furthering the state of emergency, the Prime Minister said, PM, we'll discontinue SOE early once safe to do so. I am, let's read this before I say that. Even if another 90 day state of emergency was approved, government intends to discontinue the SOE at the first and earliest opportunity once it, was, once it won't increase COVID-19 risk and it's medically safe and reasonable to end it. Now, those, that, those parameters set for closing off the state of emergency early are so vague, they are irrelevant. They mean nothing. At the earliest opportunity, once it won't increase the COVID-19 risk. When is it possible that by increasing the amount of freedom in a society, it wouldn't increase the COVID-19 risk? There's no point in time. Listen, none, not one. No point in time where if you, if you take off the state of emergency and allow everyone to return to their normal free lives, it would decrease the risk of COVID-19. Even if we had a vaccine with 100% reliability, it would still increase the risk of COVID-19 to anyone who is not vaccinated. Once you remove the state of emergency, it will increase the risk. So that as the depending factor doesn't make sense to me. Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley gave that assurance in the House of Representatives yesterday while piloting a motion to extend the SOE to November 30th. It required only government votes for passage and eventually passed with a vote of 21-4 on the government side and none against and 18 abstentions 
from the opposition side. What exactly do they mean by an abstention? Well, I know what abstention mean. I mean, what does, what does the opposition mean by abstaining from the vote? What is that vote of abstinence supposed to signal to us? I didn't hear the entire debate, so I don't know if they said it, but if they did, I don't know. What exactly is that supposed to mean? You tell me in the comments. Don't forget to drop that comment if you have something to say. And to those who are asking if I was advertising for Donut Boys, no. I was feeling like a snack when you saw me in that donut jersey. But don't forget to drop that comment if you have something to say. And click that like button whether you have something to say or not. Click it anyway. <laughs> Let's increase the likes and subscribe if you are not yet subscribed. There are new videos coming out hopefully daily. And let's see, I have intention also, before I forget, of starting my podcast. Hopefully, I believe Spotify is now available in our region. We are we are not back backward anymore. We can't get Spotify. So hopefully I could get even these videos, at least in the audio form, onto some podcasting platforms at some point in time. So yes, Rowley, who defended government's pandemic, pandemic handling and the institution of the SOE said, the only reason for the extension is to prevent further virus spread. Between a, between a period of the curfew to be determined, people will be encouraged not to congregate and socialize at night. At the end of the day, this is Rowley speaking, we want to be able to preserve lives and keep hospitals from overflowing, keep doctors and nurses from being overworked, and keep people at the jobs they've been allowed to return to now. You see that little bit? This is where me and Dr. Rowley regularly follow. Do you see that last bit in the sentence where he said, and keep people at the jobs they've been allowed to return to. I don't like that, that, that style of speaking when we're talking about things in a supposedly free society. I'm not supposed to be allowed to return to it. I have been prohibited from working. You don't allow me to return. It's not you're allowing me to breathe. If you stop me from breathing, you have stopped me from breathing. If you allow me now to return to breathing, you, you are not allowing me to breathe. I am breathing. You stopped me before. So, please, let's, you know, get the language in line, Dr. Rowley. I want to give this assurance that at the first opportunity that is medically safe and encouraged, the government will discontinue this SOE, even if Parliament approves this SOE for 90 days, where it is reasonable to do so without exposing the population, we'll end it right then and there. But as I said, I do not see how anything could measure up to what may be considered reasonable. What is reasonable in this case? That's a debatable thing, I think. He said... Technical experts' advice in is that TNT is at a dangerous place and by slackness, misinformation, or misbehavior could end up with a sudden case increase as happened in May that could lead to having to do what we did before. But the last thing we want is to lock down again to save lives. I agree. That's the last thing we want. And I believe with each successive lockdown, we're floating closer and closer with instability in our country. Even this one... Even this furtherance of the state of emergency had some protests to it. Rowley spoke against the background of horn tooting by motorists who were protesting the extension as they passed the Red House. A group of people also got, protested on the pavement outside the building. Protest noises could be heard inside the parliament chamber. The protests were in response to UNC leader Kamala Prasad's Bicessa's Kamala Prasad Bicessa's call for people to air their opposition to the extension with horn tooting and headlight flashing. Apart from outside the parliament, protests occurred in Faisabad, Avocat, certain queer up locations, Monroe Road, Shogunas, Penal, and parts of San Fernando. I, I don't think that was only in response to the opposition leader's call. There were many, many, many people, some people who fully disagree with the opposition leader, who were also calling for these protests because they disagree with it. And I agree with their right to protest. And I agree with their right to show their discontent with it. Something I find I was listening to, I, I didn't, as I said before, I didn't listen to the entirety of the debate, but I listened little snippets and I listened to the opposition's response to it. Listen, if you watched my video yesterday, I believe that was, you would I, I was saying if you're upset with the good questions being asked to the government, be upset with the opposition. Again, be upset with the opposition some more. They are in parliament. They have the opportunity. All that I am seeing now in a video that lasts no more than, what, 24, 25 minutes max, 
sometimes 15 minutes, all that I am saying here. If you find, wow, that makes sense, then get the opposition to ask it in Parliament. That's where these questions are supposed to be asked. That's where you could attempt to demand answers out of the Prime Minister. Some of these things that I'm asking, the opposition could have raised it in Parliament and asked the Prime Minister, do you have an answer for this? Do you have a response for this? That's the job of the opposition, but no. Most of what the opposition says is the cliche generalized nonsense. They keep saying that the government has no plan, they have no idea, they don't know what they're doing and they're going to crash the country. Rowley, stop now. Okay, fine. We know that's your plan. We know that's what you think. But what more than that? Let's get specific. You're not only preaching to the most vociferous and ardent of your supporters. You're trying to get new people on your side. People who are watching issues and are trying to vote or choose based on issues. So discuss issues please rowley in debate recounted the daily covid cases covid case increases since april projections then were that if the public continued normal interactions tnt would have a major, would have had a major crisis and i remember that april may we were seeing that that line of new infections and death skyrocketed and it was a it was a scary time and that was the backdrop of the state of emergency but one that isn't still the conditions well, those are still the conditions Trinidadis in. So the state of emergency, if you're saying the state of emergency was called for this level of danger, and we're presently at this level of danger, maybe the state of emergency may not be reasonable. And he was saying that he was saying that to basically say the state of emergency decreased the numbers, and that's the reasoning for it right now. But if I'm thinking about it. What he said, let, let me see if I could find that line where he said it. The only reason, the only reason, Dr. Rowley, I'm sure of this, this was his quote. The only reason for the extension of the state of emergency is that curfew to decrease nighttime socializing. That was what our Prime Minister said. And if that is the only reason, and you're saying that the curfew decreased the numbers from April till present, was it, well, not the curfew, the state of emergency, was it the curfew that decreased those numbers or was it the fact that just about the entire country was locked down? I think, I think, the let's think of the state of emergency as, as a package. It's a basket full of different measures. We're trying to, we're trying to do something and we have different tools inside of this basket. There are hammers, there are scissors, there are pliers, there are saws, there are cutlasses, and then there's a needle. I think the curfew is the needle. And the other parts of the lockdown were hammers and saws and pliers. They may have been the parts that were actually getting the numbers down. And now we've thrown out all the other parts of the SOE because understandably, I agree with throwing out those parts. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying to bring back those parts either. But then we leave the pin inside of the container and call it an SOE. And, and we're saying that, this is what decreased the numbers from April. I don't really think it was the pin. I think it was the other parts of the SOE. And if we're saying only the pin is, is left inside this basket, then I think we do not need the whole basket. We could take the pin out because we did have curfews beside the SOE. So we can take that pin out and use it. We don't need the entire basket. But if there are other things inside of this SOE basket that we do need, then tell us that. Don't, don't try to hide this from the population. Don't try to handle the population as children. Try to deal with them in an adult-to-adult -adult interaction. I think we get more progress than that. What do you think? Drop that comment and I hope you were entertained or informed. And I will see you again tomorrow for the next video. Feel the music rising with the time.